in this video, we are going to be looking at ionization energies. So let's firstly have a think about what we mean when we're talking about ionization. So ionization is usually when we start off with an atom and what we do is we knock off an electron. So we're ionizing it by removing an electron um, to form an ion. And this usually happens with atoms. So if we have an atom and we knock off an electron, we form a plus one ion. We can also do this with ions as well. So if we have a plus one ion, if we knock off an electron, um, we form a plus two ion. Uh, so the ionization energy is essentially how much energy is required to remove that electron um, in question. OK, so I'm going to start off by looking at uh, a sodium atom. So sodium has 11 electrons. Uh, so if we were to do the correct electron configuration, which is going to be 1s2, 2s2, uh, 2p6, 3s1, um, it is an s block element because the outer electron is found in an s subshell. Um, if I were to do the um, electron configuration in terms of electrons in shell, so the first shell has two electrons, uh, the second shell has eight electrons. And the third shell has one electron. OK, it's a group one metal. Uh, so it is going to have one electron um, in the S subshell. OK, so when it comes to factors affecting ionization energy, um, there are three factors. OK, the first thing also to know is that when we're doing the ionization energy of this atom over here, um, it is the electron found in the outermost shell. Uh, so the one with the highest energy that is removed first. So we must remove the outer one first before we move to the second shell. And once they've all been removed, we can then remove um, the inner ones. OK, so you always have to remove um, electrons from the uh, highest energy shell first before moving to the other ones. All right. So the factors that are taken into account. So if we try to pull away this electron, OK, um, the few factors that we have to take into account are um, atomic radius. OK, so if you think about it, um, if I have a small atom, um, obviously the attraction between the nucleus and the outer electron, because remember, um, if we're trying to remove this electron, it depends how strongly the nucleus is holding. OK, remember, the nucleus has um, a nuclear attraction towards the electron. Um, the stronger that attraction, um, the harder it will be to remove that electron. OK, the weaker that attraction, um, the easier it will be to move that electron. Um, so atomic radius. Uh, so that's essentially how close is that electron from the nucleus? OK, if that electron is very, very close to the nucleus, that means um, the nuclear attraction will be greater. OK, and therefore it will be harder. You require more energy to remove that electron. The further that electron is from the nucleus, uh, the less nuclear attraction it will have and therefore the less energy will be required to remove it. All right. So the second factor is uh, nuclear charge. OK, and that's essentially how many protons do we have in the nucleus? Um, obviously, the more protons you have in the nucleus, the more attraction it will have to the negative electron. OK, um, so the more elect sorry, the more protons you have in the nucleus, um, the greater the nuclear attraction and therefore the more energy will be required to remove um, the outer electron. Um, the third one is electron shielding. OK, so let's have a look at what we mean by that. Um, as you can see, this outer electron here, OK, between the outer electron and the nucleus, there are two shells. OK, remember, electrons are all negatively charged, so they have this sort of repulsion towards each other. So what it does is the more electron shells you have between the nucleus and the outer electron, OK, the less attraction you have between the nucleus and the outer electron, because these shells uh, kind of act as a shield. That's what we call electron shielding. And um, they act as a shield for that nuclear attraction. OK, so the more um, shells you have between the outer electron and the nucleus, uh, the more electron shielding you have and therefore less nuclear attraction uh, because that nucleus is being further and further shielded uh, by more shells. 
Um, so they are the three factors that we must address when it comes to questions about ionization energy. So let's have a look at some definitions. So we're going to stick with sodium. And the first definition that you need to know, or the main definition, I've written it out already. So it's the definition for the first ionization energy. Okay, the first ionization energy, um, so that's essentially removing the first electron. Um, it is the energy required to remove one electron from each atom in one mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of gaseous plus one ions. Okay, now this one, uh, usually two to three marks, so it's worth knowing this definition. Uh, the first ionization energy is the one where we form plus one gaseous ions. Okay, um, you will also be asked to um, write an equation to support the first ionization energy. I'm gonna stick with sodium because that's the one that I'm gonna be using in this um, video. Uh, so the first ionization energy is where we remove one electron from one mole of gaseous atom. So one mole um, of gaseous sodium atom. So they've got to be in the gas state. OK, so I'm going to remove one electron from each of those atoms and I'm going to form one mole of gaseous plus one ion. So that's going to form Na plus um, and it's still going to be in the gas state. Uh, but remember, we've lost an electron from each atom. So to balance the equation, I must also remove an electron as well. The electron doesn't need a state symbol because it's an electron, uh, but you must have these two in the gas state. So the first ionization energy of sodium, um, we form one mole of gaseous plus one ion. So the first ionization energy forms one mole of plus one ions. If we were to change that, because you could be asked to do the second ionization energy, because remember, we can uh, once we formed a plus one ion, we can still knock off more electrons. OK, uh, the number of ionization energies depends on the number of electrons. Because sodium has 11 electrons, I can do 11 ionizations of sodium until I've basically got no more electrons left. Um, helium has two electrons, so I can only do two um, ionization energies. It only has the first ionization energy and the second one. Uh, once we removed all electrons, we can't remove any more. OK, um, so if I were to change this definition to do the second ionization energy, um, obviously I would change this. So the second ionization energy is the energy required to remove one electron from each ion, because now we're starting off with ions, in one mole of gaseous plus one ions to form one mole of gaseous plus two ions okay um so that's the second ionization energy definition uh the equation here would also change because we're starting off with plus one ions so it's going to be sodium plus um and it's going to form two plus ions so it's going to be sodium two plus like that okay i'm still removing one electron in that process. So the second ionization energy is where we form a two plus um, ion at the end. OK, and you can also get be asked to write the third ionization energy or the fourth ionization energy. Um, you would need to know how to adapt this definition um, to whichever ionization energy they are asking for. OK, let's now have a look at successive ionization energies. OK, so that means um, one ionization energy after the other. And I'm just going to shorten down ionization energy to IE. OK, so in terms of successive ionization energies, if we look at um, if we look at sodium again, so I'm just going to redraw sodium. So I've still got 11 electrons. OK, now you could be asked to predict um, what the ionization energies will be or the successive ionization energies will be for sodium. It could be that they give you the ionization energies and they ask you to um, say which element they're talking about. So we're going to just do an example um, of each of those. So for this one, uh, we're going to make a plot of ionization energy against um, the ionization number. 
Okay, so what that means is um, over here, obviously you can't have zero, so we're going to have uh, the first ionisation energy, second, third, fourth, fifth. Um, if it's sodium, so this is going to be the one for sodium, I have to go up to 11. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm not going to fit this in. 10 and 11. Okay. So it depends on how many electrons there are. If there's 11 electrons, um, I have to do 11 ionization energies. Now, when it comes to removing the electron, um, you always start off with the outermost one. The outermost one, because it's the furthest away and it's by itself in this shell, okay, uh, the radius is quite large. So I'm going to say that this one is probably going to have the lowest ionization. So I'm going to do a cross, actually. Um, the first ionization energy is probably going to be the lowest, okay? Once I've removed that electron, so I've now got rid of it, I'm going to go to my second ionization energy. Um, once I've removed that electron, um, these ones over here start getting pulled slightly closer towards the nucleus. Okay, And you can also see, so once I remove that electron, uh, the ionic radius um, has decreased. Okay, um, So that means there is a greater attraction between this electron here and the nucleus because it is closer. And in terms of electron shielding, we've now only got one shell between this electron and that nucleus. OK, uh, whereas over here, when I had that one over there, I had two shells between. it. OK, so this one here is re going to require more energy um, to remove compared to that first one that we had. So this one's going to require more energy. And we show that by this very large jump that we've got over here. OK, so when you go from one shell to the other. So uh, when I had this shell over here, this was the third shell. OK. When I've gone from, I've made the jump from my third shell to my second shell, you need to show a large increase in ionization energy. There's a big jump between the two. Okay, anytime you see a big jump, that shows you that you've changed energy levels, you've changed energy shells. Okay, um, now that, so let's say I've removed that second one as well. Okay, as I'm removing electrons from the same shell, the shielding is going to stay the same. OK, the nuclear charge also stays the same as I'm removing it. Um, the electrons get held slightly, slightly closer towards the nucleus. Um, so as I'm removing these electrons here, I require slightly more energy than the previous one. So the third one, uh, when I remove this one, it's going to require slightly more energy, not much, um, just a slight increase over there. OK, when I now remove the next one, uh, the fourth one, again, slightly higher um, five slightly higher six slightly higher so i've still got eight to remove here um seven slightly higher eight and i don't know where i am nine okay so now i've removed all the electrons in this shell okay so all i'm going to do is i'm now going to get rid of that shell like that okay and i've got my final two electrons now again i've now moved i've gone from my second shell to my first shell these two here are held the closest to the nucleus and therefore they have the highest um, nuclear attraction. Um, I've now got no electron shielding, so the attraction is even greater um, and the ionic radius has decreased even more. So what I should actually do here is have another very large jump between my ninth ionization energy and my tenth ionization energy. So again, a very big jump here. Um, once I remove that one, uh, this one, because it's being removed from the same shell, um, just a small jump there. OK, so as you can see, there is a large jump between the first and the second ionization energy and a large jump between the ninth and the tenth ionization energy. And that tells us so these jumps show the presence or when we go from one shell to another. OK, and essentially this tells us the electron configuration. So the electron configuration for this one here. Uh, so let's say we don't know what atom we're discussing over here. We were just given this. OK, um, these two over here, the two, um, the highest ionization energy ones are the ones that are closest to the nucleus. So that tells us we have two in the first shell. Then it tells us that so these ones are that so this is now going to the next shell. We now have eight in the next shell. And again, a jump here, we're moving to the third shell um, over here. We now have one electron. So this essentially tells us the electron configuration 
of our atom and it's, it's 2.8.1 uh, so that for, therefore that's a sodium atom. Um, you could, so let's just do another example of that. Let's rub this out. Um, so I'm going to do, what am I going to do? I'm going to do fluorine. So fluorine has nine electrons. Uh, so I need to have nine ionization energies. Okay. Uh, fluorine's electron configuration is 2.7. Um, it's group seven, so seven electrons in the outer shell. Um, the first seven are going to be fairly close to each other. A slight rise um, between them. So seven um, with a slight increase. And then once I remove those seven and I go to the next shell, there's going to be a large jump. So between the seventh and the eighth ionization energy, there's a large jump. Um, and then those last two are there. Okay, so again, it tells us the electron configuration is 2.7. Uh, 